Welcome to The Shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera, and today we are gonna be learning how to change a worn out tubeless tire. Sneaky, gnomes. sneaky. The gnomes are at it this morning. For this task, you will need your new tire, sealant, tire levers, and a floor pump or an air compressor. Why are you replacing a tire? Well, you might be replacing it because you've gotten a flat, you fixed it on the side of the trail, but it is not working for tubeless anymore. That's pretty common. Or you might have just totally worn out the tread on your tire and it might be time for a new tire. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is take off the wheel. I, I really think taking off rear wheels is underrated for difficulty. <laughs> I was just something when I was a kid riding bikes that I like could not do. So the first thing we're gonna do is shift all the way down into our smallest, hardest, whatever the heck you wanna call it, cog. And then I'm going to turn the clutch off. If you don't have a clutch, don't worry about it. And then we're gonna undo this. You may have um, Allen key bolts here, depending on your bike. Okay, so I'm gonna pull out the skewer. I'm gonna kinda hold this like this. And then this is where the magic happens, guys. You kind of pull the derailleur back and then Oh, that was boom. beautifully done. Comes right off. And it doesn't hurt your derailleur to do this. That's what it does when you ride. And if you have a SRAM derailleur, you'll actually push it down and then lock it open. Oh yeah, that's how to their do that. clutches work. If you're gonna leave your bike like this for a long time, I don't know why you're doing that, but you should put a thingy in the brake. Yeah, that's what true. Let's called? throw a brake shim in there. Brake shim. I don't think we really need to do this right now because no one's gonna pull the brakes, but I hate, I hate good... these things. Am I doing this upside down? Don't make fun of me, please. You just have to wiggle, wiggle. Yeah. There we go. So now if a small child runs into your shop and pulls your brake, it doesn't screw over your brake. All right, brief pause while Mackie moves this for me. All right, we're gonna expedite the process by pulling out the valve cord because I'm lazy. Now that all the air's out, what is the plan? Yes, Pop the seal. Really so pause for a second, because I want people to see this. What Sid is doing is squeezing the tire into the center of the wheel. People forget to do this, and it makes it so much harder. They just try to get their tire lever under, and it's almost impossible if you don't do this first. If you were changing a tube, not the tire, this is the part where you would only squeeze on one side. Yeah, and then you would just unhook just this one side and put your take your old tube out, put your new tube in. But because we are replacing the whole tire, Sid is gonna do exactly the oh, same geez. thing on the other side. These are Excellent. notoriously tight tires. Okay, so now just so you can see what this looks like, if you look around the tire, there's like a gap here. And that is true all the way around the tire because Sid has released it all the way. And that's gonna make it super easy to get a tire lever under the tire and make the tire much easier to get off overall. All right, so I'm gonna pop one tire lever there. So real quick, just looking here, it looks like the bead popped back on here. Oh, skunk. I usually use a lot of tire levers, but we'll see if we can do it with one for today. La 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 la. This is where if you were stronger than me, you would just pull here. Oh, you got it, you got it. There we go. Good job. It's really kind of just persistence and also hand strength. So if that hadn't worked, what I often do is loop this, clip it on one of these. You clip that and then you grab another tire lever so you have it off at two points, which really is quite helpful. Okay. Here, if you were not taking the tire all, off all the way because you were replacing a tube, you just stick the tube in Right, but you hopefully didn't break your seal on the other yeah. side. So make sure that you're in the center of the channel all the way around once again, because that's what is gonna make getting that second side off a lot easier. I feel like the second side shouldn't be difficult and yet it often is. Yeah, so here, let me show you a trick if I can. Yeah. Put the tire lever down, hold the wheel, and then just push like down and away oh, yeah, on the tire. that's what I usually do. This is how you amputate all your fingers on the cassette. Just keep trying. Come on, baby. Okie dokie. Cool, now there's tire sealant everywhere. We hosed off the wheel. We're gonna give it a good wipe down. This is 
easier and more fun for everyone if your wheel is clean and dry. Same goes for your tire. If you're using a used tire, try to get as much of that sealant crud out, especially like around the bead. Just checking the rim tape looks good. Yeah, that's another benefit of cleaning it is it gives you a better idea of how your rim tape's looking. So if you need to replace it, you can do so now. Instead of fixing your flat and then having it be flat again yes. in like two minutes. You wanna get your tire and wheel as dry as possible. If it is possible to leave them out for a while overnight, if you're not on a time crunch, that will make everything easier with the tubeless setup, but it's not necessary. So let's see, we're gonna find the arrow. This is usually the step that I forget. There's like a 50% chance of getting it right, but I swear it only, like I'm only it right like 10% like like of the time. less than 50%. I'm pretty sure, I mean, you can look at the tread pattern, but sometimes it can be kind of misleading. Arrow. Okay, so there's the arrow that shows, move your thumb, because it says rotation that way. And if you look at the tread, it's pretty clear that it's creating like a forward arrow. So that is forward. It doesn't work unless you also line your wheel up like it would be on the bike, so like that. Drive your drivetrain on the right. the right. Which is, this is where I feel like there's like a black hole because I swear I had done that. I had already turned it around. And then I just paid attention to the tire for a second and, and then it turned it back around. And then magically turned itself back around. That's how tires get on backwards. <laughs> and then Sid doesn't care, but I personally like to put the logo by the tire valve. For no reason whatsoever. <laughs> Makes you look pro. It doesn't though. It makes you look anal retentive. <laughs> so just like getting the tire off, the key for getting the tire on is to put it into the center of the wheel, into that like channel, and then it will make the rest of it a lot easier to get on. This one's like really loose, which is actually kind of harder because it keeps popping out. Okie dokie, is it still going the right direction? Yes. <laughs> that was so weird. I swear I was like drive turning on the right, like this. And then next time I looked, it was facing the other direction. True. Okay, at this point you can put sealant in or not your decision. We're gonna not do sealant. That is, if you're having trouble doing a tubeless tire, it's easier to seed it up without sealant first and then do your sealant through the valve. So that's what we'll do right now. You can just pour your sealant in like that. That makes measuring it a little bit easier, I find. At this point, the tire is getting hard to get on. So you can see Sid is just making sure that it's all the way in the center of the channel on this side. And now all of a sudden, look, way easier to get the tire on. And then this is the point Sid may be able to do it by hand because she got the rest. Oh wait, straight. here's the, the, that part's not in the channel at the very bottom. Was a second ago. Sneaky. The gnomes. Sneaky. The gnomes are at it this morning. Sid's gonna try doing it with by hand. If she couldn't do it by hand, will you grab a tire lever and just yeah, show yeah. what you would do? So you do that and then, but the thing that you want to be careful just of. To not mess up sure your you, rim tape. Yeah, don't mess up your rim tape. So make sure you're between spokes so that you don't accidentally puncture down into a spoke hole. And then as you put it on, try not to hit the rim tape. I'm doing a combo method. If you have an air compressor, this will be a lot easier for sure. You just blow up without the valve core in there. It should pop right on. That's what we're gonna do now. If you do not have an air compressor, we will put a link in the corner. We have a video that is entirely about seeding up tubeless with a floor pump. We go super in depth into that. We don't have time to do that right now, so we're gonna air compress it. Using this funny thing, because it uses a lot of air. Yeah, it pushes a lot of air lot through of air. at once. Ugh, but how do you get it in there without scratching the rotor? Or try the other side. All right, so you plug it badly with your finger, grab your valve core, and then this is the kind of exciting part that you... Although we need to put a sealant in. Oh yeah. So go ahead and pull that. Just let it all out. So basically, your your seal will keep as long as you don't like, yeah, look at it, it's yeah. still Well, sealed. you can see here, the bead all the way around is consistent. You can see it all the way around on both sides, flip it around. As long as you're gentle with it while you put your sealant in, you should be able to pump it up with a floor pump afterwards. Though I don't know why you'd do that if you have an air compressor, yeah, but <laughs> whatever. Well, you wouldn't necessarily need to have the valve core out. 
I absolutely hate doing it this way, I'm not gonna lie. That's why I always put it in first. Like we said earlier, we don't really measure these things and we're still here, so. Yeah, basically I'm using the air compressor again now. Prepare. Ah! Okay. <laughs> And then we're gonna tighten this guy back on. Then we're gonna close this. Then we're gonna do a little sealant dance. Why do you do the sealant dance? Moves the sealant around. Yeah. And it's fun to dance. What you wanna do is try to get the sealant all around the tire. The best thing to do is to just go take a ride, but we can't do that right now. So instead you do the sealant dance. Nice. Okay. This one tells us the pressure. And again, obviously you just use a floor pump to tell your pressure or a pressure gauge or whatever your system is. And the final step, you put it back on the bicycle, which again, overrated in terms of difficulty. Take out your shim, if you've used a shim. You mean underrated in terms of difficulty? Yes. You know, get that onto the little chain ring, come on. Get onto the little chain ring. And up we go. You know what would have been a really good idea? is to get the through axle that's all the way on the other side of the room. Luckily I have a cameraman. So the reason Sid knew that it was going to go on the smallest cog was because she shifted into the hardest gear as she was taking it off. If you forget to do that as you're taking it off, you can still do that yeah. with the wheel off, but always before putting it on, shift it to the hardest gear. And we are going to put our clutch back on. And this is a great opportunity to adjust your derailleur if you figure out that it needs adjusting. Lube your chain. We have videos for all these things. Boom. And this is how you change a tubeless tire in one minute. First, remove the wheel from your bicycle. Make sure to shift your derailleur into the hardest gear and turn off your derailleur's clutch if it has one. Then remove the through axle and carefully remove the wheel. If you have hydraulic disc brakes, you may want to insert a brake shim in case the lever gets pulled. Remove the air, then squeeze one side of the tire until the bead pops into the center channel of the wheel. Work your way around the tire, pulling the beads into the center, then repeat on the other side of the tire. Now insert a tire lever under one side and carefully pull the bead over the rim, working your way around the tire until one side is completely free. Now make sure the remaining bead is still in the channel and pull the tire off towards the side that you just freed. Clean and dry the wheel. If you're installing a used tire, clean it as well. If possible, let both dry for a couple hours or overnight. Figure out which direction the tire is supposed to rotate and match it to the wheel. Now install one side of the tire, making sure the bead is in the center channel. Flip the wheel around and do the same on the other side, keeping the bead in the center to make it easier to install. If necessary, use a tire lever to install the final section of tire, but make sure not to puncture your rim tape. Now remove the valve core if you haven't yet and inflate the tire using an air compressor or a floor pump. Release the air and inject your tire sealant. Now reinstall the valve core and pump up your tire. Then do your sealant dance and reinstall your wheel.